Welcome back. We are going to look at scary TikToks. And we are going to see how we react. So, buckle in and get some popcorn or something because we're ready to Watch scary TikToks. Scary videos on the internet. Part 21. Wait for it. Check this out. I'm gonna give you guys a little bonus. videos on the internet. Part 21. Wait for it. Tonight's challenge. Looky, looky. Challenge of extreme lead dangerous. Draw an eyeball on every window in the house to summon the looksy man. Looky, looky, come and see. Looky, looky, come find me. <laughs> when you'll gain psychic power. No, <laughs> Tonight's challenge. Nevada Tan is the nickname of an 11 year old girl who murdered her classmate. Her real identity is kept a secret. She had some sort of disagreement with a girl in her class, so during lunch break she brought the girl into an empty room and cut her throat with a knife. Afterwards, she went back to her classroom covered in blood stains. Her classmates flew into a panic and her teacher called the police. She was arrested, and when the police asked her why she had done such a horrible thing, Nevada Tan said that the dead girl had posted messages on her website saying she was overweight and calling her Goody Two Shoes. According to reports, Nevada Tan's website was based on the Japanese urban legend, The Red Room. Nevada Tan was sent to prison. She was probably released in 2013. Next, we have Jasmine Richardson. Jasmine was a normal 12-year-old girl from Albert, Canada. She got involved with prop scene, started dressing in black, and wearing varnish makeup. On the internet, Jasmine used the nickname Runaway Devil, and her profile said, Welcome to my tragic end. She became an out of control tween, sneaking out, going to rock concerts without her parents' knowledge. She also had a boyfriend who was 23 years old. They often told people he was a 300 year old werewolf. When her parents found out what she had been doing, they grounded her and forbid her from seeing him. She was really angry, so she convinced her boyfriend to come over and kill her parents. One night, while her parents were asleep, she let her boyfriend in the house. He stabbed her parents to death while she murdered her eight-year-old brother. Afterwards, they tried to flee, but the police found them. Jasmine was found guilty and sentenced to ten years in prison. Her boyfriend was given three life sentences. Since then, Jasmine has been released and has expressed remorse for her crimes. Lastly, we have Robert Thompson and John Venables. Robert and John were both 10 years old. One morning, they decided to totally go to and go to a shopping center. They got bored and decided to kidnap a little boy named Jane Bolter. They brought him into a deserted area where they threw bricks at him. Part 2 is already up. Today I'll be telling you. We need to talk about this photo. This photo was discovered by a single mother who recently bought a new phone. She came home, placed her phone on the table, and started watching TV. But soon after that, her son found the phone and asked to play with it. She agreed, thinking nothing unusual was going to happen. But around 11 p.m. that same night, the mother decided it was time to go to bed. Strangely, though, she found her son already in bed, which was very unusual for him. Normally, he'd want to stay up a lot longer. That's when she noticed her new phone was still in her son's hands. So she took it from him and unlocked the phone. At first, only seeing some minor changes. He changed the background on her phone and took a few pictures around the house, nothing too alarming. But since the photo seemed random, she started deleting them. Until she saw something that shocked her. This was the last photo on her camera roll. Showing her son sleeping, but the photo was taken by someone else above him. 
follow for more stories. These two sisters saw something that still haunts them to this day. On January 20th, 1996, at 3 p.m. in Virginia, Brazil, two young sisters decided to take a shortcut home through a vacant parking lot where they allegedly encountered something terrifying. They came across this ugly looking creature described as having large red eyes, oily brown skin, V-shaped feet, and three rounded bulges on its head. Many people compared this being to the mythical Latin American creature known as the Chupacabra. Now if you thought that wasn't easy on the eyes, wait until you find out that the creature had a strong putrid smell of ammonia. He supposedly smelled like ass. Anyway, <laughs> when the two young sisters laid eyes on the creature, it's safe to say that it wasn't love at first sight. The creature spooked the bejesus out of them, and so they ran to their mother to explain to her what they had just witnessed. Now, prior to their sighting, two farmers, a woman and her husband, woke up to their cows going nuts outside, and to their surprise was a strange object in the sky the size of a bus, which was emitting smoke. Later that evening at around 6 p.m., two police officers spotted a bizarre animal collapsed on the road. An officer named Marco Charisse scooped the creature up and took it to a local hospital which contained a special quarantine area. Animals were dying at the local zoo without any explanation and weird shit was just going down. But it gets weirder. Almost a month after the incident, the police officer Marco Charisse that picked up the creature passed away in a local hospital. It was reported that he developed an abscess and flu-like symptoms right before he died. What's even more trippy is that the two sisters who witnessed the other creature were later visited by five men who offered them money to keep hush hush on their encounter. To this day, the military continues to deny the story, and as a matter of fact, Four one of my favorite us. filmmakers of all time, James Fox, is releasing a documentary on this incident later this year. He actually made the documentary The Phenomenon, which I highly encourage you guys to watch. So yeah, this is basically it. like the Roswell of Brazil military is totally covering this case up. It was too risky, you know? People find out about this, especially in 96, and they'll all go crazy. I understand why they would cover it up at the time. But folks, the time has come to urge governments to release this info to the public. The majority of people are ready for disclosure. Before I go, I wanted to thank each and every one of you for helping me get to 100,000 followers. You guys have really motivated me to continue making I want a hundred thousand And as dollars. promised, I'll be launching a podcast on YouTube very soon titled Fight or Flight. I'll be attempting to go face to face with eyewitnesses and former government. Are we gonna see anything or like it's just spooky that this person's driving? <clears throat> no, I didn't see shit, bro. Let's see if we can see it. Where am I looking, bro? Nah, I didn't see shit. That was dumb.
that scary AF. The urban legend of humans can lick too. In the beginning, a young woman was home alone with her dog. She was closing the windows and locking the doors before getting into bed. When one window wouldn't lock, she decided to leave it and just go to bed as usual. As she gets into bed, her dog takes his usual spot under her bed. She knows she's safe when he's there. In the deep of the night, she awakens to the sound of dripping coming from the bathroom. She's scared and doesn't want to get up to check. So she reaches down to the dog under the bed for a lick of reassurance, as she usually does. She falls back to sleep. Once more the girl is, awakened by the sound of dripping and again reaches for her dog's reassuring lick, and then falls soundly back to sleep. Awakened once again, and now curious, the girl gets up to have a look to see where the dripping is coming from. She opens the bathroom door, and what she found was horrific. Her dog was hanging from the shower with a slit throat. The noise she could hear was his blood dripping into the tub. That's and on the mirror written in the dog's blood and red humans can lick too. The urban legend of human. Do not watch this video at night. Back in 2015, a man was taking care of his friend's uncle who had dementia. On the first night, he made dinner and called him over to eat, but he didn't hear him say anything. He went to his room to check on him, but the door was locked. He said dinner's ready, but his response was a grunt. He didn't think anything of it, so he walked upstairs to go and sleep in the guest room. On the second night, he made dinner again, so he went to get his friend's uncle. He walked to his room, but this time the door was wide open and he wasn't inside. He didn't really think anything of it, so he just walked upstairs to go to sleep. He turned the lights off, got into bed, and that's when he heard a noise coming from the closet. He quickly stood up, and that's when he screamed in horror. Like for part two. They're actually not. I do have one that just wrote an hour ago called She's Here. It's story time. Take a seat. Those monsters taste horrible, by the way. Gerald Fredrickson was a disgusting man. From the time he was a small boy all the way to his teenage years, Gerald found pleasure in torturing animals and beating up kids that walked home alone while other kids found interest in sports and video games. Rude. And being as big of a person as he was, there was almost nobody at any time that could ever tell him no or resist him. By the time he was 30 years old, Gerald was a full-blown menace with nothing but an ice cream truck to his name. 70 kills under his belt, all young girls and boys. The town was in absolute chaos, but nobody would suspect the jolly old ice cream man, Gerald thought to himself. So one day during a long and boring day of ice cream routes, Gerald decided to strike again. He had promised a young girl named Susan a few days ago a free vanilla cone. All she had to do was meet him at 9pm sharp, just outside of town. Sure enough, 9pm came, and Susan found herself walking up to the bright ice cream truck with the same red band in her head that she wore every day. Ha, <laughs> too easy, Gerald said to himself as he quickly turned the engine on. He shined his brights directly in her face and then punched the gas. The ice cream truck clipped little Susan, sending her flying across the street and barely clinging to life. Gerald then walked over to her weak body, scooped her up, placed her in the truck, and she was never heard from again. Just another victim of the mystery killer in town. What a hot little biscuit that was, Gerald proclaimed as he returned home after burying the body far away. He then sat on his couch and began to channel surf, but after a few minutes of that, he began to hear a small girl outside his window laughing. My god, those sound like Susan's laughs, Gerald said to himself, as he moved his large body all the way to his window, and then what he saw terrified him. It in fact was little Susan but she looked very different. Her hair floating about wildly with no breeze. Her skin a very sickly gray color with cuts that were crawling with maggots, and a smile made of nightmares that went from ear to ear with rotten teeth visible. Oh lord, she's here, Gerald screamed. He then quickly got dressed and ran all the way to his murderous ice cream truck. Gerald then locked his doors and prepared to make his getaway by fixing his rearview mirror, but what he saw petrified him. He was looking right into the eyes of his ghostly victim, Susan. Gerald then screamed and screamed and screamed. No one ever would find the body of Susan, but they did find Gerald. His skin was that same sickly gray color with cuts that were crawling with maggots, but his face was disturbingly contorted. 
But what confused the townsfolk the most was the red headband they found wrapped around his neck so tight that it cut through his skin and crushed his windpipe. It was the same one that little Susan had wore every day. From then on, every disgusting criminal that popped up in that town was found in the same shape as they found Gerald the Ice Cream Man, with Susan's red bow tightly wrapped around their neck. Like a comment for more stories. Can I show you a scary video? The true warning this video did make me jump. This video comes from a YouTube channel called True Horror POV. This video was uploaded in 2020 and was actually claiming it was based on true events. I'm just gonna oh, show you the video here. This. This video did make me jump. This video comes from this YouTube channel, and apparently it's based on a true story. The video shows somebody that has been cursed by the evil eye, this one here, which apparently people can use to curse you if they don't like you or if they're jealous of you. Given that backstory, this, this video is video 10 times scarier. So I'm just going to show you the video. Here it is. Well, that's a different video. Aren't they recording on their phone? <laughs> but like, their phone is vibrating? We need to talk about this photo. You guys know the drill when you see the- Did you know that Granny is based on a true story? Tamara Samsonova, also known as Granny Ripper, held her son captive in her house. If he made any sound, she would brutally beat him with a bat. And on the fifth day, she killed him by hanging. Granny had 11 victims, including her husband and her grandson. She was seen carrying their body parts in shopping bags on camera from her apartment. Granny was also a cannibal. She would butcher her victims and eat their remains. Did you know Me? that Granny is based on a true story? The unforgettable wedding of the Jins. Nora Takaka and her group were very famous in the past and welcomed in most weddings because of her beautiful voice. One day Nora got a normal call. Like every call, she asked if she could sing at a wedding and, of course, she agreed because it was something normal. She went to the wedding with her group. The guests were many women and children, so much so that the group was not able to mingle with the guests and they danced and everything was normal until suddenly. One of the singers who were with Nora said to her, didn't you notice that the one who greeted us had a rough face and sometimes emitted a hot temperature? Creepy. Nora said to her, No, what is wrong with you? You are delusional. So Nora kept singing. She kept 
repeating it so that the girl would calm down. After a while, the same girl came and said to Nora, Did you see their hooves like animals? They dance very wildly and for a long time without. Stopping Nora and the group noticed the deformed body parts of the guests and got scared. But Nora said to her group, Keep going. Because if they realize we know, they will hurt us. They wanted to leave the place, but they couldn't. The guests asked them to keep playing until them. So they had no choice but to play until 3 o'clock. And they decided to leave as soon as they were gone. So they keep all these when the group left the house, suddenly the electricity was cut off and all the sounds disappeared and the people and objects they saw disappeared. The neighbor went to them and told them that this house had been abandoned for years. The unforgettable wedding of... This is the most dangerous prisoner in the world and you'll never believe why. A little girl named Shiloh was on her phone at night when she got a call from a mysterious number. And on that night she didn't pick up the phone because her parents weren't home and she didn't want to talk to any strangers. Thinking it might be one of her friends from school or her teacher, she picked up the phone. And when she picked up the phone, she heard a little girl's voice. The little girl told Shiloh to come to the park at night alone, and told her that she would play with her. Not knowing better, Shiloh decided to leave her house and walk to the park. The time was now 1am as Shiloh slowly started walking at night to the park. No one was around except her, and it was eerily quiet. Shiloh quickly realized that there was no one around her, so she freaked out and called the number back again. But this time, no one picked up. She was so scared she just wanted to see someone, so she decided to run to the park to see her friend that called. And that's when Shiloh's heart started beating really fast, because she heard a small car parked up behind her. And what happens next will absolutely shock you. If you want to know what happens, like and follow for part two. This is the most dangerous prisoner in- This is Veronica. It's a horror movie- Three movies based on true events. First up, we have the movie Aftermath. This movie is based on the true story of Jerry Rice and Janice Rutter. When they bought a home in San Diego, California in 2011, their nightmare ensued. They were a young couple who was happy to start their life together in their new home, but instead of having an easygoing life, things got complicated very quickly. First, small things started happening, like they stopped receiving their mail, then they got thousands of dollars of magazine subscriptions to their home. And then Valentine's Day cards were sent to their neighbors who were women, with the husband's name attached. Soon, things started to get a lot worse. Strangers started appearing at their home, and they started to get tormented relentlessly. They even found online ads for sex parties at their home, titled The Carmel Valley Freak Show. We have the movie called The Strangers. This horror film was based scared. on the Manson family Tate murders. This movie is also based on a series of break-ins that happened in the director's neighborhood when he was a child. The Tate murders were perpetrated by members of the Manson family in August 1969 in California. I will do a separate video on Charles Manson another time. And the last movie I'll talk about today is The Girl Next Door. This movie is based on the murder of Sylvia Likens. Her death is known as the worst crime in Indiana history. Her life was taken on October 26, 1965, by her caregiver, Gertrude Banaszewski. Two of Gertrude's children and two of their neighborhood friends also played a big role in taking the life of Sylvia. Sylvia was tortured, starved, neglected, and brutally murdered by these people. The movie based on her death was made in 2007. Thanks for watching. Three movies. Okay. I think that's a good stopping point for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you want to see more of these videos, Please let me know, and please let me know what other videos you want to see. Tag me on TikTok and some stuff, and if you want to see funny videos, also let me know. 
or if you like these videos, then let me know that too. So yeah, um, I'll see you in the next video. I'll catch you on the flip side.